Among other responsibilities, you have been head of the Chinese Business and Management Program in partnership with the Shanghai University. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rosemary. I enjoyed watching the cooking class that took place just before lunch uh, with Chef Nappi and Mila, and I'd be curious to know what our participants' recipes look like. Remember to share your pictures on hashtag cooking with Uglo. So that's hashtag cooking with Uglo. So once again, I wanted to say a great big thank you to the students here at the studio working hard for us all day. This Alliance Day is giving invaluable experience for their future careers, and Filippo, their teacher, is really proud of them. And now for our afternoon program, we're going to start with more meeting moments to discover all our campuses. So that video is coming. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining us. So we are at the Université Paris-Saclay, every campus, and we are here to uh, have a, to meet a PhD student. Let's go. Thank you for accepting to do this interview with us today. Can you start by introducing yourself? Where are you from? Uh, what do you study? How long you've been here? Alors, uh, I'm Victoria. I'm, I come from Bretagne, uh, the west part of France, near the sea. <laughs> Uh, I'm a PhD uh, student in the Université Paris-Saclay, Université Évry. Uh, I'm uh, in my uh, second year. So I'm working on deep learning for healthcare. I'm a member of uh, the small organization uh, Les Cocotte Minute uh, pour des initiatives uh, écologiques. Uh, so this uh, um, uh, small organization is, is for uh, developing the sustainable development in, uh, in the campus of uh, Evry. Uh, so uh, with this association, we, before we, we used to add like one activity uh, each two weeks. So it can be uh, a movie and then followed by uh, a small debate. Like, uh, we had also some activities to, to make your own products like uh, uh, soap or cosmetics. Uh, due to the pandemic, uh, we, we changed for online activities. And uh, we, for example, we had uh, the climate collage uh, that uh, it's an activity to understand the causes and the consequences of the climate change. And uh, also we try to discuss with the administration to make the campus more eco-friendly. Uh, so we have a, a small garden near the library and we also develop seeds uh, exchange. Uh, like this, you can raise your own vegetables and fruits. I assume uh, the pandemic uh, had other plans for us and so you had to change how you work and did, did it affect you, uh, your PhD? It doesn't really affect my PhD because I'm a computer scientist. <laughs> so it, I think this is, is quite fine, but there are some limits about online. It's like you cannot meet the people and like have a bigger network, a social network for like a professional things. Ich bin Philipp, äh, Philipp Beck mit ganzen Namen und bin Projektkoordinator für Juglo an der LMU. Das heißt, ich kümmere mich darum, dass die LMU innerhalb äh, des äh, Konsortiums äh, überall ihre Beiträge leistet in den verschiedenen Beiträgen, so wie es vorgesehen ist und habe sozusagen mein Auge auf äh, allen verschiedenen Vorgängen. Ähm, besonders leiten wir noch ähm, das äh, Arbeitspaket zu Dissemination und Sustainability. Das heißt, wir kümmern uns um die Kommunikationsmaßnahmen und darum, dass das Projekt auch über die aktuelle Projektlaufzeit hin fort Bestand hat. Äh, 
Ja, und zwar das Spezielle an der LMU ist, dass es eben keinen Campus im klassischen Sinne hat, sondern dass es über die Stadt verteilt ist. Das heißt, die Gebäude sind nicht an einem zentralen Ort gesammelt zu finden, sondern in den verschiedenen Straßen und Stadtteilen. Und die Tatsache, dass man dadurch mitten in der Stadt ist, mit der Universität, das gefällt mir sehr gut. Also ähm, wie gesagt, den, den wissenschaftlichen Aspekt, den lasse ich jetzt mal äh, zur Seite, aber ähm, die, die Lage in München ist hier besonders. Zum einen, was ich eben gesagt habe mit dem Campus, der sich über die ganze Stadt verteilt und man dadurch wirklich am Leben teilnimmt. Äh, man ist schnell im Englischen Garten, schnell an der Isar, am Eisbach, ähm, aber man ist auch schnell draußen und hat dann die Alpen vor der Tür und kann dort wandern gehen oder Skifahren und das ist sicher eine schöne Sache. Nein, kein äh, Lieblingsplatz im klassischen Sinne, aber was mir eben besonders gefällt, ist die Tatsache, was ich eben gesagt habe, dass sich die, ähm, dass man mitten in der Stadt ist. Man hat äh, Bars und Cafés direkt vor der Haustür und äh, äh, einige verästelte Straßenblöcke sozusagen, wo viel geboten wird. Und es gefällt mir gut, dass man da schnell auch ähm, ja, auf andere Gedanken kommen kann. Was einem da als erstes einfällt, ist sicherlich ähm, am Hauptgebäude, ist ein großer Platz davor, der Geschwister Schollplatz und da finden sich zwei große Brunnen, die den Platz äh, dominieren und prägen und das ist, glaube ich, das Bild, das jeder mal äh, gesehen hat, der an der LMU studiert hat und das man auch sehen sollte, das ist im Sommer schön zum Ausruhen vor oder nach der Vorlesung in der Sonne. Also die hat sich schon sehr grundlegend verändert, wie glaube ich bei den allermeisten. Das heißt, es wird viel von äh, zu Hause gearbeitet. Aber ähm, ja, das, das ist zum einen sehr schade, weil einem der, der, der Kontakt mit den Kolleginnen und Kollegen schon äh, sehr abgeht. Allerdings hat man vielleicht auch ein paar Impulse bekommen, die man auch für die Zeit danach mitnehmen kann. Das heißt, nicht jedes Meeting muss wirklich ein Meeting sein, sondern man kann sich vielleicht auch mal kurz per Zoom austauschen. Man muss nicht irgendwie alle Dokumente ausdrucken und mitnehmen, sondern kann den den Bildschirm einfach teilen und hat da vieles vielleicht einfacher und effektiver gehandelt. Ja. Ich würde einfach viel Spaß beim Alliance Day wünschen und äh, dass ich mich darauf freue, wenn wir uns nicht nur virtuell, sondern auch wirklich physisch mal wieder sehen können in der Zukunft und, und das ganze europäische Projekt sozusagen auch wirklich greifbar für uns alle macht. My name is Antonio Coelho. I am an associate professor in the Faculty of Engineering of the University of Porto. The education sector is evolving rapidly. We now have access to a wide variety of powerful tools for free or low cost. The new generations are also demanding for more digital tools and contents. I believe that this context is pushing the learning methodologies for, um, from a more regulated approach, focused on lectures and exams, to a more emancipated learning approach, based on student-centered methodologies, like challenge-based learning, problem-based learning, flipped classroom, etc. The pandemic crisis forced teachers to move to digital technologies to support the communication and collaboration in classes. And although all the community prefers the in-person classes, we will not go back to the previous systems. We will maximize the interaction and coaching on in-person classes and leave the more expositive content to a synchronous moments by using digital tools. These new methodologies will allow teachers and students to collaborate both synchronously and asynchronously, in person or remotely, on an inclusive, multicultural and ubiquitous learning environment, where the European alliances like EOGLO have a clear advantage to provide enhanced knowledge and competences. As one of the promoters of a course in EOGLO, the richness of these multicultural environments, but still, fostering a unique identity was a clear advantage to the students. Technology will foster new or enhanced pedagogical practices on a student-centric approach, but the focus will not be only on the learning process. 
but more specifically in the assessment, as teachers will be able to gather learning analytics from the digital platforms and use these learning analytics to enhance pedagogical practices looking at what went better and what parts of the process were more difficult and need to be improved. And also we'll be able to rapidly adapt to each class or each student. And this is happening now. So we'll be seeing a lot of these changes in the next years. My name is Attila Bado. Um, I've, I've been teaching at the University of Szeged for 30 years. I have held different positions at the faculty of law and at the university level. I was the vice rector of the university responsible for students' affairs for eight years. So now as professor of law, uh, I lead the Institute of Comparative Law and Legal Theory. I run a Talent Development Council and also we run an organization called Junior Academy. This organization raises funds and strives uh, to get as many uh, high school students as possible to the university. And we offer a number of scholarships to, to talented and, and needy students. I can tell you that Szeged is a beautiful university uh, city, which is a large campus with uh, more than 100 uh, university buildings. I see many advantages of, of the decentralized nature. For example, as students move from one building to another, uh, they are doing sightseeing, in fact. So, so in short, this is a livable city and a livable university for me. If I have to choose a specific place, uh, I would tell you that I love the library which is also a huge information center uh, where various uh, events are organized. In front of the rector's building, there is a statue of Albert Sandjordi, who received the Nobel Prize uh, for the discovery of, of vitamin C. And also he was the rector of the university before the Second World War. Uh, today, this statue is a tourist attraction a lot of people take photos with him uh, standing on the stairs of the building. This is an em emblematic place on the campus today. First, at the beginning of my university work, I took several long trip, uh, one year in Germany, then half year in, in, in France. And later I was able to teach there and today we have uh, different foreign language programs. This is an exchange program. So German, French, uh, and American lecturer come regularly to, to, to Szeged. And we can visit, of course, these universities as well. Well, it was, of course, very difficult. For example, I, I would have spent a month in France as part of a research program, but uh, it was impossible and uh, it had to be postponed. But uh, we are very optimistic and we hope that in the future we can meet with our, uh, our colleagues in person and our students can see the lecturers in the frame of the exchange programs in person as soon as possible. My name is Jette and I study the Masters in European Studies at Lund University in Sweden, but I am from Germany originally. I think what attracted me most to Lund University, I mean, of course, it's also the reputation that the university has. I got told by friends that it's a very good university um, or people that work there, that the environment was very nice, very friendly, but still very academic. Uh, I really like the area where I'm studying, which is Seoul, and uh, I also did a few courses at Lux, which is roughly the same area. And it's just really nice and green, and there is also like little ponds here and there, and you can visit so many different faculties, and 
every one of them have like different like gardens and environments so it's really like a lot a lot to see i mean the university library the main library is probably i mean it's an iconic building of lund university so that's definitely one of the nicest places to be in because you can also just sit around there and like sit on a bench or in the grass and then i really like to study at the looks library so that's also another favorite place 